Hey guys, today we're checking out seven modern storage alternatives for old thin clients and laptop computers. For example, here we have a two and a half inch hard drive, which is typical for an old laptop. It has a capacity of 40 gigabytes and we can see the 44 pin ID connector here. And for thin clients, very often you find these uh, DOMs or disk on a module. These are flash storage. I believe this one is four gigabytes or maybe just a gig. And they also have 44 pin RDE connectors. In this video, we're gonna check out compact flash drives, micro drives, SD cards, two and a half inch SATA hard drives, two and a half inch SATA solid state drives. Then we've got M SATA solid state drives and also M.2 solid state drives. Most of the items are bought from places such as eBay or AliExpress, but I got two review products from Banggood. We've got a Record Data solid state drive. This is an M SATA module with 64 gigabytes and also a SATA to 44 pin IDU converter. Links down below in the description. Here we have a typical thin client. This one is quite interesting. It actually has a compact flash module here, but also two 44 pin ID connectors. Now, most of the machines that we're gonna work with on the channel will have ID interfaces, but some of the new ones already have SATA, and for those you need different kinds of adapters. So in this video, we're gonna focus on the uh, older machines that have ID interfaces. So with a thin client, usually you want a module that's nice and small. There's usually not enough space to put in a full two and a half inch hard drive. So that's something we will look at in this video. With older laptops, they usually take a two and a half inch ID hard drive. Here, having a small size is actually not that important. What matters more is that you have a compatible form factor. So uh, something like this would make a lot more sense. So here we have an adapter that converts from a M SATA SSD to 44 pin ID, ID and it comes with an enclosure that basically turns this in a, into a two and a half inch hard drive. There's also a little bag with mounting screws and then you can easily just install that into your retro laptop. Not all of the storage devices that we're gonna look at in this video will actually fit into a two and a half inch drive bay. Some of them have alternatives that I just didn't buy because I don't work that much with laptops and other alternatives simply won't fit. For example, you physically cannot install a two and a half inch hard drive with one of these SATA 2 ID adapters. With thin clients, we definitely need some IDE cables. I got a couple of these five centimeter long ribbon cables. They work very well, nice and compact. Um, for smaller machines and I had lots of issues with this one. This is a bit longer and it actually killed one of my thin clients. I believe the uh, there's a short in there somewhere. So just a warning, if you see one of these uh, coming out of eBay China, definitely do some measuring beforehand. The reason these RDE cables can short out something is because they carry power, they have 44 pins. On a desktop, you're only dealing with 40 pins and you've got a Molex connector that carries the power. But with laptops and thin clients, um, 44 pins, so power is included, which is also a positive because you only have to deal with one ribbon cable and not a separate power lead. With IDE ribbon cables, it's important that you get the orientation right. To help you, there are a couple of indicators. The first one, for example, is on the IDE ribbon cable. We've got a red wire here that indicates pin one. You wanna line up pin one on the cable with uh, pin one on the device connected here and pin one on the motherboard. Some adapters make it really easy. They've got an indicator here which shows you which pin is pin one. On the motherboard, we can usually also see a key which lines up with the IDE ribbon cable. On many adapters or cables, there's also one pin missing or the hole is not present and that also helps with orientation. The missing pin is closer to pin one. So guys, with all the basics out of the way, let's have a look at the first storage solution. This is the compact flash drive, uh, very popular uh, in the retro community. So let's talk about the adapter first. So the adapters, there's no conversion chip because compact flash standard is compatible with IDE. So there is no conversion chip. That means we're getting full speed. In a USB 3 compact flash adapter, this card, for example, does 160 megabytes per second. So it is extremely fast. So the performance you're getting in terms of um, access time and writing performance and performance with small files depends 100% on which compact flash you buy. There are some high-end compact flash cards that are close to a solid state drive and they're cheap ones that you pick up 
um, for uh, yeah, in the supermarket or low price, and they perform fairly average. This adapter here doesn't have a jumper, so you can configure the drive between master and slave. We also have some uh, benchmarks that I'm going to put on the screen, so we can see we're getting very decent performance. It maxes out the audio interface, which is, has a limit of 100 megabytes per second, and it's got fairly decent uh, performance with uh, smaller files as well, but an SSD is a lot stronger here. The highlight of using uh, flash or uh, any, any storage that doesn't use a, a platter and the read write head is the access time. So don't get too carried away with the transfer rate. Um, an old machine can't even handle that much uh, data. It needs to process it anyway. So uh, having zero access time is actually what gives you the speed. In terms of the operating system, my recommendation is to use this mostly for DOS and maybe some Windows 98 as well. I wouldn't necessarily recommend this for Windows XP, although I have used it uh, for a few times simply uh, because I just had to get on with a project. But my recommendation for operating system is to stick with MS-DOS mostly and maybe some Windows 98 for compact flash cards. Next up, we've got micro drives. So this is a four gigabyte version, uh, comes out of an Apple iPod, I believe. These have the same dimensions as the compact flash cards. They draw a little bit more power because there's actually a platter inside that rotates. Everything else is the same. Looking at the benchmark results, it is uh, obvious straight away that the performance is extremely limited. So micro drives, even for DOS, um, I am hesitant to recommend them. Uh, for example, in Doom, when I used the micro drive, it was the first time I saw that uh, floppy disk icon flash when loading. I've never seen that with any other storage uh, device in the past. So uh, I would recommend that for older machines like a 286 and a 386, um, where you're playing, uh, yeah, not games that. Uh, constantly stream data off the hard drive. For anything newer or more demanding, I would not recommend this and go with Compact Flash instead. Storage option number three are SD cards, a real favorite of mine. I've been using Compact Flash when I started out with the channel, basically. But in the town where I live, you cannot buy them. No one sells them. You have to buy them online. So they're a bit of a speciality item. Whereas SD cards, the post office, the supermarket, they all have them and they're really cheap. On, uh, if they're on sale, they're often half price. Now, this is a uh, SD card from SanDisk and it can do 80 megabytes per second uh, in a fast USB 3.0 card reader. You insert uh, this into the adapter like that. And in terms of physical size, the SD adapters are the smallest. So you can compare it here with the uh, micro drive. It's a lot larger. And even the uh, this one here, which uses uh, MSATA SSD, even that one is larger. So if you need something really small, and I've got a thin client that's extremely tiny that we're gonna look at in a future video, uh, the SD card solution is the smallest by a long shot. Now looking at the back, we can see there is a chip. So here, active conversion is going on between the uh, SD card standard, uh, if you want to call that, and the RD interface standard. And there's a cost, unfortunately, and that means that the uh, maximum speed is capped. Now, I said earlier, don't stress too much about transfer rates. Getting uh, 20 or 30 megabytes per second out of a storage device is actually fantastic for old machines. What counts is the uh, basically non-existent access time. Now, once again, the performance with uh, small files and with writing depends on which SD card you buy. This is a very basic SD card, so it focuses on large files that you would use in a camera taking photos and recording video, but it's not good with small files. But if you spend a bit more and get a high quality SD card, and there are lots of uh, photography websites out there that review SD cards and they look at small uh, file performance, uh, you can definitely get one that is much, much better. And in terms of which operating system, my, it's the same recommendation as with the uh, Compact Flash card. Uh, uh, highly recommended for MS-DOS, but they also work just fine with Windows 98. Storage option number four is going for a two and a half inch mechanical SATA hard drive. Because it extends the length of the device, you can't use this in a laptop, 
But if your thin client is one of the larger models, this actually works really well. So unlike flash, you don't have to worry about wearing out uh, any um, flash components. So this is great for using Windows XP. Performance is decent. The uh, hard drives usually don't max out the IDE interface and the access time is a lot slower, of course, because it's got a platter and read-write heads. But um, writing performance and performance with small files is actually pretty decent. So again, you can use this for DOS, Windows 98 and Windows XP. And storage option number five is a two and a half inch SATA SSD. The prices are coming down. They are getting to a point where they're actually quite affordable or you're upgrading your machine and this is a leftover from an old project, something like that. Um, very useful also with the capacities. You can get these uh, 64 gig or 120 gig, so they're perfectly compatible with Windows 98. Performance is excellent. So here the IDE interface and the uh, converter usually holds things back. Uh, natively, they can do 500 megabytes per second or something around that. No, access time is uh, extremely fast. And the main performance difference between SSD and the other storage devices is when it comes to small files and write performance. So here, the SSD is just fantastic. Once again, you're dealing with um, wear and tear. And yeah, there are lots of opinions. Um, some people do all sorts of things like disabling um, certain index services and whatnot to look after the SSD. Others partition the hard drive, for example, with only two thirds of the space and leave the other one uh, empty that can help with garbage collection and other people just don't care that's pretty much what I do um, I don't use these SSD cards very long in a project um, I move on very quickly so for me I just use them I don't worry about wear and tear and um, they have integrated wear and tear uh, that's quite capable so I wouldn't stress too much about that but if you building a, a long-term project, I would definitely do a bit of researching and disabling a few features in Windows that might help with prolonging the life of your SSD. So once again, you can use these with DOS, Windows 98, Windows XP up to Windows 10, very fast storage. Um, yep, highly recommended. Storage option number six are MSATA solid state drives. So this is what they look like and you can get various adapters and they have these screws here that lets you tighten down the SSD. Now, these are, I believe, slowly getting out of fashion and getting replaced by the M.2 standard. But uh, one reason why I still like using them is because you can get a, an adapter that's really small. For the M.2, I only found a fairly large version. Performance is excellent, just like any other SSD. So good performance with small files and writing performance as well. Once again, we're limited by the IDEA interface and the um, converter chip rather than the SSD. You can do a lot more than 100 megabytes per second, for example. Also, prices and capacities are fairly decent. You're looking at around, I would say, $25, $30 for a 64 gig SSD. So um, yeah, it's not outrageous. and still fairly affordable and you're getting very good performance. Um, once again, recommended from DOS all the way up to Windows 10, really good performance. And the final storage option is M.2. So it looks very similar to the M SATA, but the connector is a little bit uh, narrower and you can also tell by these uh, two keys here. In terms of pricing, they're very similar. Um, the M.2 modules, this is actually a small one. They come in various uh, sizes um, and then you just have to screw it down to the adapter. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to find a small adapter, um, something similar to the M SATA one. This is perfect for a thin client. This one is a little bit too big. Um, it might work with one of the larger thin clients, but definitely not with one of the more compact units. But for an old laptop, this has the perfect uh, form factor and comes with an enclosure here as well. So for laptops, these are perfect. And just like all the other SSDs, perfect with uh, writing performance, perfect with small files, no access uh, time whatsoever. So excellent performance. And I believe um, there will be a smaller adapter version uh, um, yeah, available eventually, just a matter of yeah, looking around and seeing if uh, such a model gets released.
And there you go, guys. We had a look at seven modern storage alternatives for old laptops and thin clients with the 44-pin IDE interface. Let me know if you have any comments, feedback, suggestions, or questions. Just leave them down below in the comments. Always eager to hear from you. And yeah, I, I don't know everything, so I'm always eager to learn new tips and tricks with using storage devices in our old retro gaming PCs. And that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. As always, if you like this video and you wanna see more stuff like it, give it a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, click on that notification bell to get all the updates. And that's it, thank you so much for watching and I shall see you soon with another one.